all right y'all so um before we get into this word i just want to let y'all know like yes i redid this video um but i realized it was not giving me what it was supposed to give me because i felt like the devil was just very much present and he was just it was just too much going on so i say you know what in order for me not to dilute what the holy spirit has for us and the word that i got last night i must do it again so i'm gonna go 10 times harder devil you're not gonna win this season i rebuke and bind you in the mighty name of jesus so if you are able i would just ask if you would just join me please and just close your eyes and bow your head real quick all right in jesus my name we pray amen dear god thank you thank you let me just let me just stop and say thank you before i even get into what i want to say lord i just want to thank you for everything that you have done father thank you for being so good thank you for being so kind thank you for being so loving oh lord i just want to ask that as we read your word tonight god that you would just just be with us god just dwell within our presence god just make make us know make it known that you are here with us within this season oh lord i just want to ask that you will do which only you can do father i want to pray that you would just help us realize that the word that you have for us tonight is tailored custom made for us that is going to help propel us into the people that you have that you have called us to be, oh, Father. I just want to ask that you would go ahead of us tonight and make our crooked path straight, God. I want to pray that you would soften our heart, God, and make our hearts open enough to hear and receive a word from you, oh, God. I just want to ask that you would go ahead of us and rebuke and bind any type of action any type of weapon that the enemy is trying to form against us god i pray that you would send it back to hell where it came from because devil you would not win stand behind me you you will you will be used as a pedestal within this season to help us reach our victory god i just want to ask that you would just allow us to exercise the authority that you bestowed within us god when you formed us in our mother's womb lord i just want to ask that you would just do what only you can do within this season god implement a fire that will burn for you and only you father i just want to thank you for this wonderful word i just want to ask that you would send your spirit of discernment that you would send the holy spirit god i just want to ask that you would just show us what you have for us within this word god in jesus my name we pray amen all right y'all so with that being said let's get into the word and you yeah. okay hold on i think it's coming to does this work for y'all i don't know i because i'm making a video like it's not live so i can't really get y'all an input I'm, i hope this is good i hope y'all can hear me but let's get into it okay so tonight we're gonna be reading esther okay so this word was really speaking to me last night for numerous seasons and i'm gonna get into that but i need y'all to know you're gonna need your notebook you're gonna need your pen and you're going to need an open heart okay so we're reading esther chapter five all the way through seven and one verse that i want you to look at we're not gonna be the whole thing like i said earlier um we're just gonna be reading esther chapter five right now verse 9 all the way through 14 so stick with me i'm gonna bless you promise so it says haman haman went out oh before i get into this i'm so sorry y'all let me tell you guys the, the the four main characters that you're gonna need to look out for a man named haman he's an emperor he's a persian emperor and he's very much um very prideful very boastful very full of him like this persian emperor was just too much then you got another dude named king z king z was pretty cool all right like he was he was a good ruler he was very fair um just very good but he did recently leave his wife because the wife was a little bit disobedient didn't do what he asked okay but he did catch his eye on this one girl at the beauty pageant that he hosted named esther esther is a beautiful woman super smart super intelligent very much a proverb study one woman okay and they end the linking up you know now they're together and then you got this one dude named mordecai and mordecai is just a man of god okay like he is just a faithful servant to the lord and i need you to see how this works because the holy spirit was speaking and as i'm talking right now like he's just giving me the revelation so i can't wait to share this with you stick with me y'all i promise you i'm gonna bless you all right so we're in esther chapter 5 verse 9 and it goes like this haman went out that day happy and high spirits but when he saw mordecai at the king's gate and observed that he neither rose nor showed fear in his presence in whose presence in the emperor's presence okay he was filled with rage against Mordecai. Nevertheless, Haman restrained himself and went home, calling together his friends and Z, his wife. Haman boasted to them about his vast wealth, his many sons, and all the ways the king had honored him and how he elevated him above the other nobles and the officials. And that's not all. Haman added, I am the only person Queen Esther invited to accompany the king to the banquet she gave. 
and she has invited me along with the king tomorrow. But all this gives me no satisfaction as long as I see that Jew, Mordecai, sitting at the king's gate. His wife, Z, and all of his friends, okay, all his friends said to him, have a poll set up. Research, <laughs> research, child, I promise you it's the devil, y'all. I can't. Okay, let's back check. We're on verse 14 if you're confused. Um, His wife, Z, and all his friends said to him, have a poll set up, reaching to height reaching to a height of 55 sorry 50 cubits and ask the king in the morning to have mordecai impaled on it then go with the king to the banquet and enjoy yourself this suggestion delighted Haman, and he had the pole set up okay so there's so much going on let's retract real quick let's let's analyze what we just read because a lot of us sometimes you don't like analyzing what you read friend and you will read the bible and miss the whole entire word because you're too lazy to go and dissect what you read friend i'm telling you if you move with that type of spirit in this season in this year you're gonna miss the things that god is trying to show you and that just might be the reason why you're still stuck in the same season that you've been stuck in for the past 10 years this is serious okay anyways um Oh, I need my pen, friend. I need my pen because there's so much I just want to. Okay, so for the people who have their Bibles, if you don't have your Bible, it's okay. Just track along with me. Um, Make sure you're writing lots of notes because this is so important. So I need y'all to see what's going on right now. So for the people that kind of got it, but you kind of missed it, let me tell you. So basically what's going on is you got this dude named Haman, okay? So we already know Haman is the Persian emperor Um. And he's good friends with the king. And he comes across this dude named Mordecai. Mordecai, I'm assuming, is just a regular, smegular man who's just serving the Lord. Okay, because Jews at the time, they just believe in one God. And the Bible already tells us, thou shalt not serve another God. And all praise, honor, and glory belongs to the most high. You feel me? So, Haman was upset that Mordecai did not observe nor rise or show fear in his presence okay so that's why he was ticked off he was irritated because this man did not esteem him wisely he didn't esteem him to the way that he wanted to be seen so he got upset and devised a plan to have this man killed all because this man didn't acknowledge or honor him and i need you to see how this works okay because this man, I'm, uh, this man is honestly like, nowadays you could call this man broken. Okay, like this man got so many issues. Like he's psychotic, my friend. You need to go to the psych ward. Like you upset because somebody didn't acknowledge you really, friend. Very much toxic. Okay, but let's keep going. I need y'all to see this, okay? So after this encounter happens in chapter 9 through 10, okay? <sighs> Look at what 10 says. 10 says, nevertheless, Haman restrained himself and went home. Restrained himself. He held himself back. So he didn't talk to nobody. He didn't go to anybody that was on the street. He didn't go up to the first person that he saw and say, hey, like this person didn't. Did no, 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 no. He went back home. And I need you to see this. Okay. It says, Haman restrained himself and went home. Why is that important? You're going to see in the next verse. Calling together his friends and his wife. He went back home and called together his friends and his wife. And what did he do? He boasted about his vast wealth, his many sons, and all the ways the king had honored him and how he had been elevated above other nobles and officials and that's not all he added how he was the only person that the queen had invited to accompany to the banquet but i need y'all to see this right here ready Haman says but all this gives me no satisfaction as long as i see that jew mordecai sitting at the king's gate you missed it you see how this encounter that he said he restrained himself from. He wasn't going to tell anybody. He went back home. Okay. He got his group together. He got his clique together. He starts bragging, making everybody feel 
like oh he got it all together he knows what he's doing he's he he he's straight like he's he's winning he's balling very much like get into his bag but then he says this right here but all this gives me no satisfaction as long as i see that jew mordecai sitting at the king's gate and if we jump two verses down to verse 14 oh no sorry it's still the same verse i lied um if we jump a sentence down it says his wife z and all his friends said to him have a pole set up reaching to a height of 50 cubits and ask the king in the morning to have mordecai impaled on it i need y'all to see this because that speaks volumes and for the people that are like oh my gosh how is it speaking volumes i'm very confused i'm not tracking with you hear me this man had an encounter he was offended he was hurt that something didn't go his way so what did he do it doesn't say he restrained himself and went to god no 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 it doesn't say he restrained himself and went to bed it doesn't say he restrained himself and went to alcohol. It says he restrained himself and went home. What is your home to you? Home is where you're comfortable. Home is where you're safe. Home is community. And the thing that you know, the people that you trust. He went home, called together his wife and his friends. And I need you to see that he called together his wife and his friends. He called, he got his community together. And I'm not talking about community as in like your neighbors and your neighbors, neighbors, neighbors. neighbors. No, 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 baby. I'm talking about your community. I'm talking about your clique. I'm talking about show your ride, your ride or dies. I'm talking about show your, your homies, your day ones, the people that you, you give all these titles to. That's what I'm talking about. He called together those people and those people that he vented to, those people that he thought had his best interest at mind, told him to do something that would lead him several verses later into his own demise and i need you to see how this works because some of us right now we're in community with people that are slowly but surely leading us into our own demise and we don't realize it because he didn't realize it in this moment right now he says haman restrained himself he didn't say what he wanted to say he didn't go to anybody he didn't go to the man on the road he didn't go to the bread store he didn't start telling his business on Facebook. He said he went home. He went to where he was comfortable. Called up his friends. Called up his wife. Got to speaking. In that community. His people. It says it right here. His wife and all his friends. That community. Told him. Then go with the king. To the banquet. Okay. And enjoy yourself. After you have asked the king to have Mordecai impaled. Friend, I, you're not seeing it. Because what we don't realize is the things that we tell our friends. Okay. You know what? I'm, let me. Holy Spirit, let's hold on to the word. Let's hold on to the word. I need to, I need to give it to y'all the way I'm, I'm, I'm feeling it. Okay, um, let me go to the part where it says Haman was impaled. I'm about to jump to chapter 7 all the way to verse 9. Then Harbon, Harbonai, I'm pretty sure that's how you say it. Then Harbonai, one of the Enochs, Enochs? Yeah, I think it's Enochs. Enochs attending the king said, A pole reaching to a height of 50 cubes stands by Haman's house. He had it set up for Mordecai, who spoke up to help the king the king said impale him on it so they impaled Haman on the pole he had set up for Mordecai then the king's fury subsided I need you to see this because two chapters ago his friends his wife were the ones that told him to do this and now the thing that his community the thing that his clique told him to do led to his own demise and what you don't realize right now, friend, 
I said all this to get you to this one point that the Holy Spirit was trying to tell me last night. He told me like this. Watch your mouth. Watch your mouth and check your community. And I said, Holy Spirit, what does that mean? He said, in this season that you are in right now, not everybody needs to know what you're doing. In this season right now, you need to check who you're in relationship with. You need to check who your people are tied with and what they are tied to. Because not everybody who claims to be your friend in this season, to, claims to be your king, your foe, your whatever in this season, has the best interest for you spiritually. Yeah, they might have the best interest for you fleshly. Yeah, something that's going to please your flesh. But that might not mean it's the best interest for you spiritually. And too many of us, are hindering this season because the community that we are in was not rooted in God. So all the advice that you're getting that you think is good advice and, and a good idea is stemming from what the enemy planted within that person to implement onto you. And because you don't see it, you're just taking that advice that wasn't rooted in God. And applying it into a season that God has called you to be great. And ultimately, you're self-sabotaging your season because the community that you are in was rooted in something that was not founded by God. Because here's the thing. This man, even, even though he was wicked, and I know, I know we've all heard the saying, well, bad company can take good character. But I need you to see if good community was there because it does say it takes a village to raise a family. If your community was rooted in God, whether or not the bad company was there or it wasn't, friend, you can pray that thing away because there's power in prayer. But if the people that you're tied to, if the people that you're connected to is rooted in evil as well, as soon as you get to start to spit in your problems and, and what you're feeling onto them, you're going to get a reimbursement of the same thing because you're spitting out negativity because you're talking out poverty. That's the exact same thing that you're getting. And God is saying, if what you're producing out your mouth is not positive, if what you're tied to is not from me, then you are allowing yourself to self-sabotage in this season. And God told me so clearly last night. Too many of us are tied to things that are not rooted in God. Too many of us are in communities that were not founded by God. And what we don't realize is what people say have an influence on how we act and how we behave. So because your community is not tied in God and it wasn't founded in the Lord, your community now is by people who are worldly, by people who have been byproducts of what the enemy has influenced them to do. So when you go to that byproduct that was from the enemy, the enemy's thoughts are now implemented onto you. And because thoughts become actions, you let what they say marinate in your head too long. And now that thought has now become a belief because if a thought lingers in your head for too long, friend, it can now turn into a belief and that belief can turn into something that you've accepted into your heart. And that's why so many of us are struggling within this season because what we're tied to is not connected to God. And then the thoughts, the things that are coming out that person's mouth are tainting our mind. And we're busy growing and regurgitating seeds that don't produce good fruit. And the problem with that is when God tries to give you his thoughts, and put you on to new things and the provisions and the blessings and the anointing that he has for you. It now, instead of it being planted, it now has to combat the now seeds that have already been planted by the enemy. All due to the fact that you've now 
put a illegitimate seed in an area that should have been God's potting hole. That should have been God's uh, uh, the seed ground. That should have been God's soil that he can use to plant visions into you. And what's so crazy about this, there's so much I want to I want to speak on this Esther stuff, but I, I'm going to give it to you the way the Holy Spirit gave it to me. And if the Holy Spirit wants me to speak again on this, then I will because I, I have another, I, I just feel it, but I need to give it to you the way the Holy Spirit gave it to me. So not my will, y'all, but the Lord's. Okay, so what's so funny to me is that we can move as a society, as this new generation, we'd rather be connected to things that look like they're connected than actually have genuine connection. And I need to tell you because some of y'all, everything that I'm saying is going over your head and you missing it because you like, well, that's my day one. And and how are you going to tell me I need to drop my homie just because he don't believe in God? And, and how are you going to tell me I need to leave so-and-so? Like they was there with me when I had my breakup and they was there with me when my mom and dad was fighting and when it was this, that, and the third. And I just don't see me doing it. Like, I mean, I'll stop talking to them for a little bit, but like, I can't drop them completely. Da, 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 and you're just giving all these excuses and, and you're just giving so many reasons on why you should prolong your destiny. And I need you to understand this. What's so funny is the enemy loves to play us and we allow it to happen because we don't want to get a new perception in this season. Excuse me. We don't want to get a new perception in the season. We rather stick to what's comfortable and stay stagnant. And I need to put you onto this so that when God asks you why you continue to choose your ways over his, you can't say that you didn't know. Us as a generation, we love to have quantity over quality. Friend. You'd rather be in a friend group full of nine, 12 different people that you don't even like. You barely know their middle names. What's their favorite color? But you you still connect yourself in that friend group. You know they talk bad about you. You know they do things that you're not supposed to be doing. You know they vague. You know they drink. You know that their futures is not leading to anything. But you still put yourself in those ties. You still put yourself in those situations. Oh, because you want to take an Instagram pic, right? Oh, because you want to look connected on TikTok, right? Oh, because you want to be in a group chat, right? Oh, because you don't want to be lonely. I forgot. Oh, my bad. I'm sorry. I forgot. You didn't want to be lonely this summer, right? That's why we still in connection with them. So you rather settle for quantity over actual quality. Because last time I checked, Jesus only had a select few. You only need one or two people in this game. I promise you that. Jesus only had two out of the 12 disciples carrying that cross with him. So I need you to stop thinking that you need this whole football team of people to come with you to your vision. Because the truth of the matter is you don't. The truth of the matter is sometimes it just needs to be you. Because other people's thoughts can taint what God is trying to give you. And I feel like that's what's been happening for a lot of people right now. Other people's thoughts have tainted the thing that God gave you. Now you don't even believe anymore. And I need you to know this. There's a difference between the fans and actual players. There's a difference between the people who play on the basketball court. You know why there's five people on the court on each team? Because not everybody can play the game. There's not room to have excess people. Not all the fans can be at every single game because, look, there's not room enough for all that. There's a difference between a watcher and a player. It's so easy to judge other people, okay, when you're not the one going through it. And hear me. I understand. It, let's be honest, okay, because I already told y'all, like, I am honest open on here and i'm transparent okay it is nice to have your friends affirm you when you are about to blow a gasket it is nice to have people 
did say they agree with you when somebody did you wrong and you just so ready to cuss people out and you so ready to fight somebody because you really tried it and and you so ready to leave that relationship and they tell you yeah go cheat on him go beat him up go do this go cheat on her and do that and it's it's fun okay because yes you better tell me friend that i should do that because i have the right to because when you feel offended you want somebody to validate your feelings and what a lot of people think is in order to be in an actual friendship, you need people that are going to validate your feelings every single time that you're under. But I need to let you know, validation is a want, but it's not a need. You should not always be validated when you feel offended. I'm going to tell you that. And this is why it says vengeance needs to be the Lord's because if we take it into our own hands, we would wish harm on a season on a person who was already down bad and what God wants and what we want are not the same. God wants transformation. You want that person to hurt. That's why vengeance needs to be his. And I need to let you know that it's nice to have community. Excuse me, y'all. It's the devil. I rebuke and bind the spirit of sleepiness. Okay. Only until after this word gets seen. It's nice to have people that understand where you're coming from on certain situations and certain topics. But is it worth having the affirmation and losing what God told you? Is it worth having that affirmation and getting told information that's going to cause you to prolong your destiny? Is it worth it? Because some of us are still settling for these friendships, for these relationships that are less than us because we don't want to be lonely. We don't want to look like we don't got it all together. We'd rather look like we're connected and look like everything's going smooth. But deep down, what you're tied to, friend, isn't even durable. It's not sturdy. What your friends are tied to that you keep going asking. And this is what I will never understand. And I'm pretty sure God put me onto this yesterday. I will never understand how you will go get advice from a broken person. This society is so weird. We're so weird. How are you going to get advice from somebody who's single? How you, as a taken person, going to get advice from somebody who can't even keep a relationship longer than three months? You listening to somebody that has seven different baby mamas. Talking about some. This how you keep a girl. This how you, this, that. You can't even keep a girl. You judging other people's weddings and judging other people's relationships. Right? You're not even in a relationship. Excuse me. You're not even in a relationship, friend. How you judging, but you don't even got it. And there are some of those friends that will sit up there and only be friends with you because they want to see you fall. So every time you come to them and you vent to them about your problems, baby, they over here telling you the wrong advice. Oh, but if I ain't, and, and this, and this the, the, the line everybody likes to use, if I was you, if I were you, if that was me, I would have. And they twist and spin your purity and try to convince you that doing what your flesh desires is, is what you should have did and is the right thing to do. And I'm telling you right now, too many of us need to go back and check our community, friend. I don't know how much I can stress this enough i just i don't know how much i can stress this enough but um i do want to end on a personal note because y'all already know god would never call me to speak on something if he did not allow me to go through it and um i need to put y'all onto this so a while back i think it was like two months ago i don't even know how many months um it's been now but you know two months ago we're gonna say um i had to break ties off with my best friend and him and I have been best friends for like five years, like almost half a decade. And I'm so sad because that 
person knew me before I was even me. He knew me before I was official slave queen. He knew me before I was even the baddie that I am. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, he just, he knew me before all of it. And it's so crazy to me that God called me to break ties off with him. And it hurt me so bad for many, many weeks because I was like, God, why would you do it? Like, that is the most... And it hurt, and it still hurts just thinking about it because it's like, oh my gosh, everything that we've been through, all the years, the time, the 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 effort, the the all the relationships that he's been by my side with, all the the friendships, all of it, like everything, he just knows everything. And I was like, God, like, why would you do that? And what's so crazy is I got this word yesterday night. Right after I was coming to God and I was letting him know how upset I was about the situation because I recently found out that he was asking about me um, on one of my friends. And I think everything just like came rushing back to me because I was like, God, why? Why would you allow me to even be in relationship with my best friend and, and have him for that many years just to take him out of my life like that? Like, why? Why, God? Why? And it wasn't until God showed me this story in the Bible that it made sense. Because sometimes your community isn't the best thing for you spiritually. And that right there is one of the hardest statements to say when you are going through things like child abandonment and you... You, you are depressed and you feel lonely and you have nobody to talk to. And I mean nobody to talk to. And you just, you feel like you're closed off and you got that one good person that you feel like just understands you and God calls you to break ties with them. That is saying that statement right there hurts a lot of people and it offends them. And I understand. Because when God told me that, it hurt me so bad because I was like, God, why? But when I look over all the things that God has done in my life, it made so much sense. Because you cannot grow if you are in areas that don't allow you to grow. If you guys are on the same level, there is no growth that's going to be happening. Because if you're broken and they're broken and they don't have any motivation to grow and you don't got any motivation to grow, you're just going to stay stay. And God said, that's not the best thing for you spiritually. And when I called you away from that, when I tried to isolate you in that season and you obeyed, you now have given me room to allow you to grow spiritually. And that's when God was putting me into relationships with people that I saw that were more advanced in their relationships spiritually with me. And the thing that God will do, and I've noticed this so many times, is God will place us in rooms that look bigger than us. And it's not to amplify the fact that we don't know what we're doing and we are very much underqualified, but rather it's to allow the anointing and the blessings that he's placed on those people's lives to overflow onto your life. And when God was putting me in relationship with those people and 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 those those connections and those ties with these people, the, the their blessings, their anointing was able to overflow into my life. And I was able to pick up some tools, some, some skills, some assets from them that were propelling me into the next season. And that's why I can sit up here with confidence and say, if your community is not rooted in God, then you don't need it. Because if it doesn't help you spiritually, then we don't need it physically. Because what a lot of people don't understand is just because it fits you spiritually, I mean, sorry, physically, doesn't mean it's for you spiritually. And we got to take care of our spiritual well-being before we get to our physical. Because God can only do things in the light. And God will always change you from the inside out. God does not work in reverse. 
He's not going to change you from the outside in. And too many people want God to change them from the outside in. And I'm telling you, friend, that's not how it works. God will change you from the inside out. We need to first start with your spiritual before we get to your external. Too many of us asking God, God, give me a glow up. Give me this. No, you need to ask God to renew your mind. You need to ask God to give you a new perception. That's what you need. Stop praying for a glow up. Stop praying for a man. Start praying for your health. Start praying for your spiritual and mental health. Baby, your mental is on the decline. Your relationship with God on the decline. You talking about something, I need a glow up. I need a man. I need a friend. No, you need God. You need Jesus. You need some real power. Over there settling for counterfeits. Things that God already told you that he was going to give you. If you seek him first. Oh, I hate the devil. And what's so crazy is people don't understand that community takes sacrifice. Not everybody is going to be a part of your destiny. Not everybody is going to be in every season of your life. You've got to understand that you need to accept it. And it's not an easy pill to swallow. It's not an easy pill to swallow. But it is the truth. And God told me so powerfully that if our community does not help us spiritually, then we don't need to be tied to it at all. And I believe that's why God called me to break ties off with my best friend because my spiritual growth was staying stagnant. My physical needs were probably being met yeah, like, we, we, we would chill, we'd be cool, but my spiritual was on the decline. My mental was on the decline. And I say this to just say that even though it's hard, because what I'm telling you right now is, like I said, it's not an easy pill to swallow, but it's also hard to do because accepting it is its own struggle. Actually listening and obeying because some of you, God is calling you to break ties with certain people right now. Some of you, God is calling you to leave certain relationships, certain areas, certain friend groups, certain certain whatevers. I say this to say, because it's, it's not going to be easy. I'm not going to lie to you. It's not going to be easy. There were nights where I just cried because I'm like, Lord, why would you do that? Why would you allow it to happen? And God told me so clearly. Community takes sacrifice. And if your community doesn't help you spiritually, then it's not needed. It's not needed. It's not worth your destiny. It's not worth what God has for you. It's not needed. Because those thoughts that aren't rooted in what God said have the potential to destroy you in the end. This man... His thoughts weren't the thing that set him over the edge, but rather it was the thing that the community, his clique, his group put him onto that led him to his own demise. And what you don't realize is the thoughts, the ideas that are coming from your friends, that you're calling your friends that aren't really your friends, are slowly but surely leading you to your own demise. Are slowly but surely leading you to your own devastation, to your own despair. And I don't know who needs to hear this, but all I know is check your community and watch them all. All right, y'all. That's all I have for you tonight. Um, I just want to pray out real quick. If you guys do have any comments or any questions, please, please, please drop them down in the comments below. Um, I've never said that before because I'm always on live. But yeah, drop your guys' comments down below or like hit me up on TikTok. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but yeah, without further ado, y'all, let's get into the prayer. Yeah, so close your eyes, bow your heads, please. Um, yeah, in Jesus' my name, we pray. And dear God, I come before you today and I just want to thank you for this beautiful word that you have given us tonight, God. I just want to pray that this word will just be what you needed to be, God. And I pray that it will marinate on your brother, 
sorry, on my brothers and sisters' hearts, God. And I pray that it won't get off their heart until they make time to address it with you, oh Lord. I just want to thank you again for this word, God, because you really didn't have to speak to us, God. But your love is so, so good, so kind, so, just so, so reckless, God. You did not have to speak to us tonight. You could have left us the way that we were, God. But you still chose to take the time out of your day to speak to us, God. So I just want to thank you. Even if my brothers and sisters forget to thank you, God, I just want to give all the praise, glory, and honor to you, oh Lord. I just want to thank you, Father. I want to thank you for sending your son, Jesus. I want to thank you for dying on the cross for our sins. I just want to thank you for everything, God. I want to thank you for this word, most of all, God. I want to pray that you would just help us break ties with whatever type of community that does not look like you, God. I want to pray that you would make it easier for us to leave certain cliques, certain friend groups, certain relationships, God. I just want to ask that you would continue to just speak to us, God, and give us provisions of a new life without that relationship, without that person, without that, that opportunity, God. I just want to pray that you would just continue to just... Just guide us and protect us and keep us safe, oh God. Give us the spirit of discernment. Give us the spirit of of, of, the, of the Holy Spirit, God. I just want to rebuke and bind whatever the enemy has for us, God. I want to speak um, restoration and healing over our lives, God. I want to plead the blood of Jesus over every single household that's under the sound of my voice. And that is not, God. I want to pray that you just protect your word, God. Send your spirit to all seven continents in this world, God. I just want to ask that you would just take mercy on your people oh god and just continue to bless and keep your hands over our life oh lord i just want to ask that you would give us divine insight on the things that you have for us god in jesus my name we pray oh god i just want to pray that as we enter this weekend god that you would just be with us tonight in jesus my name we pray amen <sighs> all right y'all um i hope this message really spoke to you guys i don't really do like out videos and stuff but yeah anyways y'all um i hope everybody has a good night i love you god loves you stay blessed slay nation donation period uh read your bible please don't use this as you bring your bible okay make time for the lord go read your bible make sure you pray fast if you need to get into god's presence i will see y'all next week okay and yeah peace